You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm one of your hosts, Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. With me, as always, is my co-host, Brian McKeon. Brian. <laughs> Plenty of opportunities. Couldn't come through with a timely hit, though. Uh, they stranded a small village on 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 base tonight. We'll we'll tell you the exact number in segment one. But coming up on the show, we're previewing the pitching matchups in the series that will be in Milwaukee this weekend, and we'll tell you three keys to that series. It's also Fan Mail Friday. We'll be answering some of your questions. But first, the Yankees ended up splitting the four game series with the A's in the worst way. I spoke about this on Monday with the series um, with Tampa. When you win two out of three, it's always better to win the last game like or lose the first game, win the last two. When you bookend a four-game series with two losses, it's really frustrating. <laughs> yeah, especially to a team that, again, these are losses that you don't give back at the end of the year. And these are games that you need to pile away in the win column. They're a better team than Oakland. They are. And yeah. mark my words, this is a series that in – a few months when in September, when they go to Oakland and play them in a three game series in Oakland, you're going to look back on this series and say, damn, that game one and that game four were games that we could have had that we could have yeah. used in the yeah. record. And then if you, if you go to Oakland in, in September and you need a sweep, you're going to say, Hey, wish we would have had game one or game four back in, back in, you know, <laughs> April. So, you know, frustrating, they're going to lose games, especially on an, on a, on a pretty good Nestor start Murray wasn't great, but I'd say he had a good Nestor start. Yeah, to not be able to support him and had the bases loaded twice and ground out to two double plays, pretty yeah. frustrating. Yeah, um, I kind of when they didn't end up scoring in that first inning, I thought to myself, it's going to be one of these games. I can feel it right now. I almost yeah. didn't even want to watch the rest of the game because um, I warned everyone before the series started. I said, just because a guy has a seven in his ERA doesn't mean he's not going to shut down the Yankees, and that's what happened. Um, like behold. you said, Nestor. Looked really good, then not so good, and then he recovered, and it was just, it's only three runs. They couldn't even score more than one run. They could have scored six in that first inning if yeah. they had done what they should have done against a guy with a 7.89 ERA. And the small village on the bases, they stranded 11. 11. That's way too many. The kind of things that can't happen, right? Good teams don't do that. You're still figuring your team out and your offense out, but... Good teams don't leave 11 guys on base. You got to fix those kind of things, especially against bad teams like Oakland. Yep. Yep. Well, enough about that because that game was frustrating and annoying. And we have a new series to worry about. And we're going to talk about that in segment three. But first, it's Fan Mail Friday. It's time for our insiders questions. And as usual, it's tradition. We start off with our girl, Betty. Well, woman. Shouldn't say girl. She's a woman. Betty. <laughs> Everyone talks about being worried about the bullpen, but they seem to be pulling it out repeatedly. But who is the biggest worry in the bullpen? Also, do you think DJ will be back before midsummer? Well, Stacy, what are we considering midsummer? Right. Because give me your deline uh, give me your delineation because I <laughs> consider midsummer maybe fourth of July ish. Mm. And I don't know if we're getting there. I don't, mm. he's not even, he's not even doing full baseball activities. They're shutting him down for a couple of weeks now. I don't think he's getting there. That That's just my personal opinion. But Betty, if you think there's a scenario where he's going to be back in an earlier time than that, tell me how, because he's not even playing double a starts yet. Yeah. He's not even back and just, and just getting in a rhythm at bat. He tried for one inning and got hurt. So right. I, I, to me, there's no justifiable prediction. It's not even worth having a prediction on DJ. See what happens. See how the rest of his, uh, um, rehab assignment goes. See how if he can get back on the field sooner than later. But right now, I don't think it's it's fair to put a timetable on DJ. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, biggest worry in the bullpen. I don't have many big worries, honestly. If I want to look big picture, I look at Clay Holmes, just because I personally, and he's been off to a nice start this year. I don't personally view Clay Holmes as a big game type closer. I don't know about you. It's something that I see in his – it's over the last two years, the, the lack of control that he has in big moments a lot of the time. Something about it, I don't 
I don't get that Mariano type feel out of Clay Holmes, and no, no one. That's a little rough to say because no one. <laughs> I was just gonna say of, you're not gonna get a, you're not gonna get a Mariano feel no, out no, of no. anyone I, I ever. I don't mean it. I don't mean <laughs> it by that. Let, let me use another another picture though. I don't get a um, Josh Hader type feel where mm-hmm. where I'm very confident this guy's coming in and oh we're not gonna hit this guy or right. Emmanuel Classe feel right. Whereas I get that feel with those guys. I don't get that with with Clay Holmes. So I right. think he's the one that concerns me a lot. That's why in the offseason I was pushing, I was pushing for them to give that deal to Josh Hader. I really, I wanted, that. I think they needed him. Um, you didn't make that move, but I, Clay Holmes concerns me always in a big spot. I still think there's a big bullpen piece to be made at some point this year. They could, yeah. I was a little worried about Caleb Ferguson, but he seems to be getting a little better lately. It's not as frightening watching him. I just think he needs to, you know, get it together just a little bit. Not too bad, but yeah, we just need guys to like, come, you just need guys to come back. We have Kane still get, coming back, you know. Well, so. Kane still working towards things, and they also they don't get full usage of their arms in the in the uh, spring training. They they never do. They, they bullpen pitchers always complain about they don't really start to feel themselves until it starts to hit you know mid June July. That's when they start to really warm themselves up. So you got to give it a little time to delineate who you like and who you don't like out of the bullpen. I think Kane is going to be a big piece, though. You mentioned once he's ready to come back, though, because he's a nice setup man that they, they're kind of lacking right now. Right. Uh, right. Let's move on to Kyle. Um, so we've been hearing a lot about umpires making bad calls. I know that the minors are using robot umpiring. Do you think the Major League Baseball will implement that in AL or NL anytime soon? I think that's why they're testing it out. <laughs> In certain places. I mean, I don't know how soon it's going to be. And I don't think it's, I mean, obviously it's not going to be, you know, years ago when they said robot umpires, everyone was picturing literal robots from like the Jetsons, like Rosie, the uh, uh, made robot from the Jetsons. But this is really just like a backup system to help out the umps. Some of them need it badly. A lot Um, of them do, especially this crew. Oof, this crew was bad. All four of them were bad. It was just bad. (laughs) We, we were we were texting about it during uh, actually the middle of the game. the The umpiring has just been atrocious this entire series. It was so bad, yeah. And they so they, they they couldn't avoid it. I mean, you had everything from the ball to the judge thing. You had incidents today. I don't know what it is. I you, you won't get robot umps until at minimum twenty twenty six, right? Until it's it's rebargained at the end of twenty twenty five because yeah. they're not going to just kick the umpires out after one year. It has to go through a lot of trials and tribulations to really see. If it works in the minors full time, you're going to need another sense of umpiring going on. I don't think we're very close to robot umps. I really don't. Um, but when it first came out that idea, I really hated the idea of robot umps, honestly. And now that we get closer and closer, and now that the umpiring gets worse and worse and worse, I I kind of am more in favor of it. But is it? robot umps or is it more like a system like they have in tennis <laughs> right that kind of helps i think it's definitely the- it's 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 more like tennis that's exactly yeah. what it is yeah it's 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 more like tennis it's more like automated calling it's kind of like i guess using ai in a sense and like a backup that, that, system kind of like yeah. oh wait this t- didn't look like a strike they check it oh no it wasn't well, a strike it's a ball and because thing. i believe the point is to have umpires still on the field yeah but they're gonna have like a, like an airpod in a sense in their ear telling them ball strike, ball strike. So they're not making the actual call anymore. Um, I'm sure Angel Hernandez will try to override the umpire, the, uh, the robot <laughs> up at some point, you know, but if he's, we're, still, we're if he's yeah, if he's still around in 2026, there's a, thankfully he'll, he'll, problem. he'll sue the robot umpires. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> our final question from our final insider and the final question of segment one, this one cracked me up and I had to include it from Bruce. What's up with Brad Osmus? He never looks like he's enjoying himself. <laughs> I never even noticed Brad Osmus. And I, yeah, I'm I don't even... I don't notice the bench coach not having a fun time, do you? No. 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 I've um, never noticed him having a bad time out there. So I don't know where you I got this just, from, Bruce. But I, think I, I guess we can face. put an email into the Yankees. No, but I think it's just his face. Like he has that kind of face where he doesn't look happy unless he's really smiling. Like he just has a the rest. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't think he's got a rest, think... a resting blank face. Yeah. Like a, almost like a resting sad face in a way. <laughs> Which is so I don't know, unfortunate I thought... for Brad, but I think, listen, I think he's doing fine. I think he's doing fine. He's the bench coach of the Yankees. They're playing well. 
Um, he's getting paid a, a lot of money. He's putting food on the table. I think he's doing fine. Yeah. It's just, I thought that question was so funny. Cause I was like, now I'm going to have to watch him. Now I'm going to have to see what his face looks. Not that look they out show him that much, but I have to look out for it now because uh, that's just going to be something <laughs> in the back of my mind for the rest of the season. Okay. Uh, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on our videos and hit the notification so you know when our videos go up. And if you want to be part of the next Fan Mail Friday, reply to the pinned comment on our videos Monday through Thursday on YouTube, or you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. The link is in the description and it isn't only for Fan Mail Friday. You get texts from us. You can text us questions. We'll give you injury updates, roster moves, and more. There's a 14-day free trial, and it's a lot of fun. Coming up next, answering more of your questions. Mother's Day is right around the corner. If you're still scratching your head about what to get your mom, don't fret. DoorDash is here to save the day. Use code LOCKEDONMLB to get 50% off your next order, up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on your next flower, convenience, grocery, or retail, retail order. Now on DoorDash, you can do all of that on DoorDash. So picture it, you're sitting at your mom's house. She might be slightly disappointed because she thinks you didn't get her something. And then lo and behold, the doorbell rings and flowers show up. How? With DoorDash. And if you want to add an extra touch, you can pair those flowers with a gift card to her favorite bookstore or coffee shop and just make her even happier. So why wait? Order now and let DoorDash take everything, take care of everything you need to make this Mother's Day truly special. Use promo code LOCKEDONMLB to get 50% off your next order up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on flowers, convenience, groceries, or retail only on DoorDash. That's LOCKEDONMLB, all one word, all caps. So order now, make this Mother's Day one for the books. DoorDash, delivering joy one doorstep at a time terms apply. Welcome back to Locked On Yankees. Make sure you watch Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest sports stories of the day. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you can catch the Yankees' hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Download the SiriusXM app and search the word Yankees. It's time for YouTube questions, and we have a long one here. <laughs> so let's uh, put this up on the screen so everyone everyone can read it along with us. Here we go from Robbie Garns, 7732. I have a general baseball question. If possible, I'd like to hear from both Stacy and Brian on the subject. With the Manfred ghost rule in effect during extra innings, are either of you surprised that more teams don't just bump the runner over and play for one run? I know it depends on the score, but if one run is all that is needed to walk it off, it seems like a no-brainer to give yourself about an 80% chance of scoring. Is this strictly due to the difficulty in executing a good bunt, or is there some larger strategic factor that I'm missing that makes this a bad idea? I'm eager to hear your input. Thanks and take care. I feel like not a lot of guys bunt well. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, it's actually true. They don't practice bunting anymore. It's not a no. thing in baseball. It's it's not like they don't value bunts. They don't value giving away outs. It's an analytic system that, that the game is going by. They do not value giving away outs. So therefore, they don't value they don't value bunting. They don't like it. They don't want players doing it. They don't. They, so they don't teach it. They don't practice it in the minor leagues. When do you ever see a guy bunt a guy over in the regular game? When right. do you see suicide squeezes? It doesn't right. exist anymore. Um, yeah. So there's that reason. Also. I think in the top of the inning, you that that first run is looked at in the top of the inning as a given. It's mm. usually that that's how teams are viewing it. You want to get the guy that's at the plate in because right. the two run lead almost makes it a, a much easier because you're thinking the team in the bottom of the inning is getting that first run back anyway. Right. So you always look at the guy at the plate as the guy that you're trying to get out most most of the time. So I think teams try to don't want to give away outs. Because if you're on the road, you you think of that run at second base as you're getting that run no matter what. It's the runner at the plate that you want it that you want to score because the two run lead means a lot more. So a lot of teams that are pitching to you that are getting the, the at bat in the bottom of the inning, they're focused. They're, they're not focused on the one run. They're focused on that still that second run. So mm -hmm. that's really a a big delineation that teams have right now. So they don't view it as value to give up that one out. 
Yeah. Yeah. But you really, yeah, you don't really see people bunt. Cause I remember back in the two thousands, people would always get on guys, like, especially when Jason Giambi would come to bat because everyone was on <laughs> the right mm -hmm. side of the field because he pulled the ball. And one time, I don't think he, he didn't mean to do it, but he almost like bunted down the left field line and got a double because there was no one anywhere near where the ball went. And Juan Soto did it last year. Remember, remember last year with the Padres, he did it. He, he, he got a double because he was able to bunt down the line. Yeah. It does happen, but they don't teach it anymore. Right. Like, like honestly, like that's, it's not a thing that's practiced anymore because the game doesn't believe in it. Again, if you, when's the last time you saw a runner on first and second in the fifth inning with one out? And a guy bunts the runner over. Right. Never happens. That's not the thing anymore. It, yeah. It's just that's not how baseball works anymore. So it's unfortunate. I know that's the way that you grew up watching the game. And there are times when I'm screaming at the television, asking for them to bunt the ball to, to get the, guy, <laughs> the runners over. They're not playing that way anymore. And they're they're just not. What's worse, them not bunting or someone attempting to bump and bunt and popping it up? <laughs> oh, that's annoying. That the, the the bunted pop up is annoying. I do miss <laughs> suicide squeezes though. That was like one of the funnest plays in baseball. And you know you don't see that. You don't get it anymore. Yeah, no, you really don't. It's, uh, yeah, it's like small ball. Not that it doesn't exist because it does, but and some of it's the got its, it's got of its, it. but it's got its own variation of it now. It's not, yeah. it's not small, small ball like you know it. Right. Uh, Stacy, let's go to Antonio Brown 1616. He asks, How silly is it for fans to boo Judge? Given how much Judge has done for the Yankees, do you still think this can impact Soto extending? No. Um, Short and sweet. Also, also yes, also yes, it's silly, but Mo was booed, Jeter was booed. They boo everyone. They boo everyone. Not that I agree with it, but they boo everyone. It's like a rite of passage. It's almost like, oh hey, they booed me. Hey, I got it over with. Yay. Okay. He knows. He he sometimes even comes out and says says things like, Yeah, I'd boo myself. You know, when they were booing him in the playoffs because he wasn't hitting. He's like, Yeah, I boo myself too. It's fine. You know, these guys are big boys. They understand. I, I, they play in I New don't York. Love I don't love the Yankee fan narrative that 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 booing is a thing with our own team. I, I don't I don't I don't enjoy that. Oh, um, I don't either. I think I think you have to be a certain level of bad to be booed by your own team. Honestly, you should be. <laughs> and, yeah, and and when it's a guy like Judge who has um been there, done that, and quite frankly, put in the service time, um, he should not be booed at the level that we seem to think it's okay to boo him at mm. times. But, you know, like you said, A-Rod got booed a ton. Garrett Cole's been booed. I mean, the list goes on and on of guys. Jeter started 0 for 31 in a season. They booed him. So, no. I mean, yeah. yeah, Mariano got booed. I mean, so it, it does happen. Do I love it? No, but that's a different argument of what Yankee fans do. Right. Um, do I think it impacts Soto? No, I don't. No. Because I think, A, A I'm going to be quite honest with you, I don't think Soto's ever getting to the point where he's going to get booed. No. I don't, I don't, I don't think, think so either. I don't think, he ha I don't think his game is a game that, his struggles will extend long enough because he's always going to be doing other things out there. Yeah, I don't think his struggles will ever extend long enough to allow him to get booed. And if it does, he's a big boy. Like, you know, I'm sure the booze will hurt and he won't like to get booed. And then when the Yankees put $600 million in his face, somehow the booze will be less remembered and he'll <laughs> forget about them. Right. That's just the way I feel about it. Right. I agree. And our final question for Fan Mail Friday from Charles Darwin. Impressive. Wow. What hurdles will the Yankees have to endure to win three of three or two of three in Milwaukee over the weekend? Well, hurdles. Um, I don't know. Getting guys on base and actually driving them in. There's a hurdle. <laughs> Stopping Christian Yelich. That's a hurdle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things about well, Milwaukee's a good team. They're a tough yeah. team. They're going to play the Yankees tough. Um, you, you just got to go out there and stop them. They have the same record now, 16 and eight. So let's go get, get out there. Um, and Milwaukee's got less pitching too. So, but we'll get more into the next segment. Yeah. Um, did you see the home run that Gary Sanchez hit off Chapman on Thursday? What a, what a weird twist of events. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. It is weird seeing uh, people like that who were a big part of yeah. one of the, no. one of the, best teams of the last 10 years the 2017 squad Can't i mean I, it. it's my favorite i love that team i loved that team so much they made me so happy in in that playoff run and it was just such a bummer to see how it all ended and then find out why it all ended the way it did um Fun fact, but it, i went to i went to every home playoff game that that run nice i was at every home playoff game uh, starting from that wild card game with Didi. 
Yeah. I mean, that was just one of the more incredible playoff runs I could ever remember. Well, I'll tell you right now, I knew they were winning the wild card game because it was October 3rd, which is my father's death date. And I was like, there's no way Gus is going to allow the Yankees to lose no. on this day. No, no way. He had it in him. Yep. He, but, 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 but he made it dramatic for you. He did. Yes. Thank he you, did Luis make it Severino. <laughs> Yeah, all, all, all two thirds of uh, Luis Severino's first inning. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that 2017 team. When you think about who was on it, you know, Jacoby Ellsbury was still there. You know, Matt Holiday was there for that year. Oh, and wow. it's just like, yeah. Um, but it's uh, interesting to see Gary. You know, I, I, I still like Gary Sanchez, and I don't like how his career ended with the Yankees. And I always wanted him to be better because he had a chance to be like the way he came up. And what oh, he yeah. was doing in that small amount of time in 2016. And it's just, um, it's a bummer to see how it ended with the Yankees, but I'm glad he's still playing. Yeah, I'm glad he's still in the league and he still has the capability to hit nukes, clearly. Yeah, yeah, that the was talent's quite, still there. Yeah, that was quite a shot from him. So yeah. speaking of Sanchez, speaking of Milwaukee, we're going to preview this weekend series between the Yankees and the Brewers coming up next. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. I'll give you about that I love tomorrow. The New York Rangers to win game three on the road. Uh, I just think that's a game against Washington where the Rangers are over. They're minus 2,800 to win the series. They're such a huge favorite to move on. It's a, I think the Rangers understand the necessity to get the series over with quickly as Carolina finishes their series off quickly. If you're a Yankee fan and you're also a Rangers fan, bet the New York Rangers to take care of game three and hopefully get through it a sweep so they can be well-rested going into the second series. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, FanDuel America's number one sports book. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Stacy, let's go to Milwaukee. My, I've been to 17 stadiums around the league. Wow. And Milwaukee is my favorite one. Hmm. The favorite one that I've been to. I think it's the most beautiful. The slide in the back at a TGI Fridays in left field where you can watch <laughs> the game. I just think what a beautiful, I don't know if you've been there before, but it is my favorite stadium in baseball. I absolutely, absolutely love it. You um, know, fun, fun fact about me. I've never been to the middle of the country. I've only flown over it. Really interesting. Um, So you've yep. never seen any of the middle America stadiums. Nope. Fascinating. Yep. Um, I'm lacking on more of the middle America. I'm more coast to coast, but yeah. um, regard, <laughs> regardless, um, Milwaukee is the is the favorite one that I've been to. I did this. I did that on the same trip as the White Sox and the Cubs. Milwaukee is an absolutely gorgeous stadium. Um, and Christian Yelich, one of my favorite players in uh in baseball, we get to see him play too. Um, I I something about um me as a baseball fan from the way I grew up and from the uh the way the league was when I was grew up watching. I'm sure you feel the same way. Something. Maybe it's me choosing to feel this way. Something still feels romantic about National League, American League, interleague play. Even though there's nothing special about it anymore because they they play all the time, something still feels romantic about, I mean, I guess an old school AL East rivalry, but like now an I was, AL, I was, NL. I yeah. was going to say, I'm like, I remember when Milwaukee yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember, played all the time. I don't remember yeah. that, but now that I'm seeing it, my childhood was like, if the Yankees played the Brewers, there's was like, whoa, once in every three years. Now that I'm seeing it, it's like, I, I don't know, something something hits me where it feels you know, good. The Braves were in the NL West. Like, I remember all that stuff from all those yeah, old days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> way before my time. But I, but I, I enjoy it. I like seeing this kind of stuff. The yeah. I, I like seeing the, the interleague play, even though it's not, again, it's not special anymore because they play every National League team every year. Yeah, There's still something about it that I really enjoy. Um, Game one, uh, Colin Rea versus Luis Heal. Um, Heal's one and one with a 275. He's really looked good lately. It's His problem has been really going deep into games, but... He's looked really awesome lately. Uh, Rhea's 2-0 with a 2.08, so expect uh, 10 runs to be scored in this game. 
Well, it's, <laughs> because it's that's funny. just how this stuff works. It's funny because I'm always complaining about people going deep into games. And if you look at the numbers or when you listen to the numbers that we give you about the Brewer starters, this they're similar to the Yankee starters. They're all mm -hmm. five, five and one third, five. So, you know, it's a problem around the league. <laughs> the problem that I have more, and, and again, Reyes last start, five innings, five hits, no runs, three walks, three Ks. My problem with it is they, they build their team and they've built their team over the last few years to be bullpen dependent. That's how Milwaukee, Milwaukee builds their team intentionally, their guys not to go deep into games. My problem with it is the Yankees didn't do that. Right. You know, for like for years, the Brewers team was built around Josh Hader. It was built around Devin Williams and all these elite, elite, elite level closers that they had developed that can get you through the six, seven. They, they had a whole list lined up. The Yankees don't do that. So it, it's, it, I understand that they're both going through the same problem, but the Brewers built their team to be built for that problem. So when it comes, it's not a problem to them. It's mm -hmm. expected and it's hoped for, but that's how their team is built. For the Yankees, it's more of a problem. Um, heels last start five and two thirds, two hits, no runs, three walks. Nine Ks in the win against uh, the Rays. Um, I've liked what I've seen out of Heel though. That yeah. that 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 fastball, he's truly developed it and gotten serious command on it. It's one of the better fastballs in baseball now. Um, this is going to be an interesting, really an interesting overall series. Look at the rest of the matchups too, Stacey. Yeah, I I I agree. So Friday night's start is eight ten. Saturday is a seven ten. That's Carlos Rodon against Joe Ross. Joe Ross is one and two with a 4.05 ERA coming into this one. Rodon one and one with a 2.70 ERA. As we all know, Rodon did pretty well against Oakland in that game that the Yankees couldn't score for him. Yep. Seven innings, one hit, no runs, two walks, four strikeouts. Ross's last start was against Pittsburgh. He picked up the loss in five and one third innings, gave up six hits, one run, one walk, four strikeouts. Really, Rodon's last multiple starts have been great. He's really gotten himself into a rhythm here. Uh, and that's what they need. We, we were talking about it a few weeks ago. This is exactly what the Yankees need. They need Rodon to be in this kind of flowing rhythm because if he doesn't get into a rhythm like that, they're going to have a lot of trouble notwithstanding Garrett Cole coming back as uh, taking his time. Right, right now, they're doing absolutely fine. Garrett Cole can take as long as he needs right now because although, the, although they need length out of, the, out of the starting staff, they're still getting elite pitching out of the starting staff. It's, the starting step isn't necessarily a problem. It's just the length that they're not getting out of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Garrett, Cole will, Garrett Cole will provide that, but they're not, they'd be more in a rush for Garrett Cole to come back if guys like Stroman and Rodon weren't performing. But yeah. Rodon's been awesome so far. He's been what you signed so far, and that's a really good sign for them. Yeah. Uh, Sunday's start is going to be a 2 10 game, uh, one o'clock in Milwaukee. Um, Marcus Stroman's going to get the start for the Yankees, two and one with a 2 9 3 ERA. He's going up against Tobias Myers, 0-1 and 1-8-0 ERA. And Strowman's last start, he went five and a third with seven hits, three runs, a walk, and nine Ks. They won that game against Oakland. And then Myers only starts so far. It was his debut the last time. Five innings, four hits, one run, one walk, four Ks. They lost at the Pirates. Those pesky Pirates are still sticking <laughs> around. Those pesky Pirates that I told you about. Um, the one run came off a first pitch he threw to Andrew McCutcheon, former Yankee great. Um, <laughs> so... This will be a fun series. Um, interesting series, definitely. Um, good pitching matchups. I don't expect a lot of runs to be scored, even right. though Milwaukee's a ballpark where you know guys can hit the ball out of. Um, I'd be interested if I was going to this series to to watch batting practice because the ball does fly out of this place. I'd love to see where Judge and Stanton could put some ball some balls in this place. Yeah, uh, one of the best baseball moments ever happened at that ballpark, right? The uh, infamous tie in the All Star game that. Yep. <laughs> Ah, but see, like, and my boy Jason Giambi winning the home run derby that year in Milwaukee. Can you I explain his... to me at least? Maybe you've explained to the the rest of the audience. I don't think I remember. Where does the Jason Giambi love fest come from? Where does it originate? Was he your oh, favorite player when they signed him? Or yeah, oh did... no, it was. I was not happy when they signed him. I was upset that Tino was leaving, and then because I was a girl in my twenties and then saw what Giambi looked like without his greasy hair and beard. I thought, Ooh, he's cute because uh -huh. it's fun when you're like me or someone else like me, we can watch baseball, be serious about baseball, but also find the players aesthetically attractive. It's just an aesthetic <laughs> thing. You like looking at people, right? I guess so. I guess so. I, I never felt that way about Jason Giambi. I'm more of a uh, Starlin Castro kind of guy, but I hear what you're saying. So. <laughs> well, this is even funnier. We'll, I'll just talk about this quickly. When Brandon Drury played for five minutes with the Yankees, there was a faction of Yankees Twitter 
some of the guys were doing the whole I'm straight, but he's good looking kind of thing with Brandon oh, Jury. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that, that move. <laughs> yeah, you know, so that's what it was. And I used to have a picture of him on my flip phone. Uh wow, a wallpaper we're really of him. yourself. And it was I'll I'll admit this. It was a shirtless picture of him, okay? So the Oh wow. The, one of the security guard women at old Yankee stadium looked at my phone and she looks and she's like, that's what's under that uniform. I said, yeah. She's like, Ooh, I'm going to have to check that out more. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Jason Jambi was hiding a little more than, uh, the tattoos. Yeah. That he had in there, I guess. It was totally, it was totally, yeah, it was that, but I liked him cause I thought he was a good player too. And I mean, there were, he had some good seasons in there too. He had some I mean, moments. He carried the team on his back in 2006 until he broke his wrist. I mean, you know, that was that was the year of the wrist. That was when Sheffield hurt his wrist. Matsui, Matsui. broke his wrist. Yeah. 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 That was that was not a fun year. So no. three quick keys to this series. Yankees need to hit. They need to score. Getting on base is great, but you also have to score those guys that get on base. Um Stroman and Rodon just need to build on their last starts, especially Rodon. I'd like to see him stick to that last yeah. start because it was really good. Stroman, I would like to see fewer home runs this time, Marcus. <laughs> and then yeah. Heel, same thing, build on his last start. Um, you know, he had those two walks right at the end, but up until that, I mean, nine keep the strikeouts. Too. Yeah. Keep, the, yeah. keep using the fastball because yep. it's a key for him. Yep. Uh, one more time before we end the week. It's another week. Holy cow we're this this season's flying by don't forget to join the yankees in uh, the yankees the locked on yankees insiders club there's a link in the description below on youtube uh you can sign up for a 14 day free trial you get texts from us you can text us questions for next week's fan mail friday or just text us anything you want to and if you don't want to join the insiders club you can leave comments under our videos on youtube and leave your questions there for fan mail friday and you can catch the Hometown Yankees broadcast on SiriusXM by downloading the SXM app and searching Yankees. Coming up next week, we'll recap the series with the Brewers and we'll preview. They're playing the Orioles next Correct. after that. Yes, they're going yeah. to Baltimore. It's going to be a rough time. And Monday, we'll talk about the minors for you guys. And that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Yankees. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. And I'm Brian McCann. We're going to see you guys on Monday.